Hello and welcome back to Flight Sim World. Uh, in this episode, I'm actually not looking at uh, anything like Community Update 14 because uh, somehow I managed to miss that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, but uh, I managed to miss Community Update th uh, 14, not 13. Uh, so I'm not going to be talking about that because it's a bit late to talk about that. What I am going to be do, uh, doing is taking off uh, one of these Piper Seneca 5s. I haven't flown this in a while. And we're going to be taking it off as I am right now from Edinburgh Airport in a major thunderstorm. So you can see I'm actually struggling right now to keep this straight on the actual runway. It's, it's kind of... It's kind of difficult to keep it straight on the runway. I'm going to rotate uh, right now, and now we're going to go right. Positive rate. Then we should bring our gear up and our flaps up. There we go. Or well, as the gear comes up, anyway. So we're going to just be flying around Edinburgh at the moment, and I want to see what it's like in a major thunderstorm. The last time I was here, um, it was in... I selected sort of foggy sort of weather... And you could see the clouds and you could see how it was and everything looked a bit a bit dull and it was very choppy it wasn't very uh, smooth it, it was fairly choppy so I want to see what it's like right now in flight sim world and I want to see what the weather's like I want to see what this major thunderstorm is like is it difficult to fly in at the moment it seems to be fairly difficult to fly in I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble here I'm having to manipulate these controls to get myself even flying in a straight line as you can see I'm just I'm jolting around with the with the actual yoke, uh, and I'm just going to see. Can I just switch on all my ice, uh, all my anti-ice and stuff? Because it's going to be a little bit, it's a little bit rough at the moment. So let's get ourselves turning over as I'm doing right now, and we're just going to fly out across this across this uh, Firth. This is called a Firth, and you can just see the bridges over in the distance. That's the uh, rail and road bridge. The what are they called? The uh, the Firth of it's it's called the Firth of the Fourth of Wow that's uh no the Firth of Fourth that's what it's called the Firth of Fourth so that's the Fourth Road uh, bridge over there the suspension bridge which you can just see and just out of range or just below the actual glare shield you may have just seen a little bit of red that's the railway bridge we'll be going back around or I'm, I think yeah I'll cross over. I'll turn around and I'll sort of fly over them both again because uh, I want to see what they look like I do want to see what they look like and then we'll fly over into Edinburgh itself which is at the moment uh, just behind us so we're on the opposite side of Edinburgh Edinburgh is behind us we've left the airport and then we'll come back into to a nice landing so this is going to be a fairly short video like I said I just want to experience what the thunderstorm is like I haven't actually had a look at the thunderstorms in this title yet with the true sky update so it's going to be kind of interesting and uh, at the moment I must say it's not entirely difficult let me just reduce throttle there as I have uh, it's not entirely difficult to fly it's very very the uh, turbulence it's definitely very very turbulent so that's that's definitely something that I'm considering uh, and having to take into account. I'm not going to fly with autopilot on this. I want to see what it's like to fly uh, all manual. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me just zoom out on the on the map. As you can see where I'm just pointing, that's the Firth of Forth. So that's what we're going over right now. We've just gone over and that's the two bridges just below us. And you can just see on the map, you can just see the glide and the localizer for the airport the green at the bottom of that map if you have a look at it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bank around we're on the opposite side i don't know what this town is on the opposite side uh, there's a railway obviously that goes all the way over to dundee um, but we're not going all the way over to dundee which is now to our dundee's over to our right at the moment it's sort of north of edinburgh you just gotta continue up you can actually follow a railway all the way around but what i am surprised about at the moment is how smooth it is it genuinely feels quite smooth now I don't know whether this is me or has flight sim world actually become smooth on the frame rates I think I'm gonna pull up the frame rates at some point when I can so at the moment I'm just trying to fly this aircraft but I will pull up the frame rates maybe once I straighten up and go across the bridge I'll, I'll see if I can pull up the frame rates and I want to see what I'm getting because I think last time I flew here I was getting sub 20 I was definitely getting sub 20 and that that red light is annoying me that's the pito heat I can't remember where the switch is I just can't remember where the pito heat switch is it's here somewhere there it is 
There we go. Okay, nicely clicked. Right, that's got rid of that light. That's probably a good thing. Uh, you just saw a flash of lightning just there. I saw a flash of lightning over Edinburgh. But here we go. There's the there's the bridges. So that's the two bridges. They're very well done, I think, in terms of how they look. So very nice. And we're just going to fly over them and see what we can see. Ooh, that was pretty cool. You know what? I think that might be a thumbnail. That flash of lightning, I'm going to try and get that as the thumbnail for this video as I'm just uh, closing or leveling out from my bank. So there's the bridge. Uh, the road looks okay. The yellow is a bit... I don't remember the yellow lines in the middle. We don't have yellow lines in general in the middle of road. That's an American thing. And the railway bridge... Uh, it looks like a railway. The railway kind of looks like it's got very large sleepers, but it's still a railway. So, yeah, let's uh, pull up now very slowly. I've got to be very gentle with this because you can see what my speed is like at the moment. We're pretty high up and just heard a crackle of thunder. And that turbulence is definitely pushing my aircraft down. So I'm, I'm kind of, I am struggling to fly this at the lower altitude. When I was up towards the base of the cloud, it wasn't as bad as it is down here. Now, I don't know whether that's just because I'm closer to the ground, it's feeling exaggerated or... It's just the fact that higher up there was a little less turbulence. I wouldn't assume there'd be less turbulence higher up, uh, especially until we get out of the cloud. But, you know, what can you do? So I'm just powering up now, and I need to make sure I don't get into the higher range. So I'm actually going to pull up fairly severely uh, and try and make sure that I'm, I'm as smooth as I can. Uh, looking at those raindrops, you, just, you can just see me looking at the raindrops right now. They're a bit pixelated. They still need to improve that. You can see right there, they are quite pixelated on both sides. If they can improve those raindrops to look a lot better, uh, I think that's going to make the whole rain effects on the on the actual screen look a lot nicer. I mean, it, it does look good, but it does look very, very pixelated. It shouldn't be too difficult to actually get that fixed up. Now we're going to fly over Edinburgh, so you can just see the castle ahead of us. Um... I just want to see, there it is so if you look between the compass and that little I don't know what that is that window the black of the window you can see the outline of the castle so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to fly over the castle and then maybe around that around that hill I don't know whether that's a park I don't think that's Hollywood Park Hollywood Park is a wonderful place actually over there looks hot looks like this Hollywood Park you can't see it now because I'm banking um, I'm trying to keep this aircraft straight but you might just be able to see it right through the propeller I think that's Hollywood Park, a really nice place to go. And we're fairly low here, so we're just going to fly over the castle, which is to our uh, right, just ever so slightly. Just need to turn this aircraft in. It's difficult. I'm going to switch these dome lights off. I don't like the dome lights. In fact, is that the dome light up there? Yeah, it is. This whole time I've been... Right, so this whole time I've been looking over the other side to press the dome light switch when it's right above my head. Well, that's embarrassing. That's very embarrassing. But there's the castle now. Again, they need to improve that. That It seems like every building that's sort of specific to Edinburgh at the moment seems to look a bit blacked out. Now, that needs to improve. Now, we've got this this area over here. I don't know whether this is a park. I can't, I can't remember. I don't think that is the park. The park was a lot... Uh, actually, that might be the park. Because it wasn't too far from the castle. I mean, there's a number of parks in Edinburgh. Yeah, it wasn't too far from the coast, so that might be the park. It's really nice, that place is. There's some nice lakes and a road that goes all the way around. And you've got Arthur's Seat at the top, so Arthur's Seat. So we're just going to bank around this hill over here. And now, just looking at the different buildings, it's a lot more colourful than it used to be. So I'm kind of happy that it's a lot more colourful than it used to be. But, that being said, it's still a little bit too grey. I mean, if I look at that, I can't really tell what, what country I'm in or what city I'm in by looking at that. But then there are little areas, like for example, I can just see uh, on... It's kind of hidden by the pillar, so once I bank around, we'll be able to see it a, a lot better. There you go, right in front of us. That area does look like a coastal area in Britain so th there are these little bits and bobs but I think there needs to be a lot more improvement did I see uh, lightning sort of was that flashing was that a reflection in the windscreen or was that off the back of the propeller because that looked quite scary 
and it looked very very close actually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just fly out to to the sea a little bit and we're going to turn back towards the airport we're going to try and remain at this height I don't want to climb too much um, we are still fairly low I mean if you can just see the airport in the distance you'll see that the puppy indicators are red so obviously we are way below the glide slope but we'll sort that out very very quickly it's not going to take us too long to sort that out so out back on the 1st of 4th 1st of 4th yeah 1st of 4th it's kind of difficult to say that 1st of 4th imagine saying that in a Scottish accent the 1st of 4th uh, yeah, I, I really I can't do a Scottish accent today sometimes I can sometimes I can't but what we're going to do is we're going to bring this aircraft into land we are kind of fast at the moment but I am trying to be this fast uh, because I want to get it on the ground as quickly as possible so I'm just going to zoom in now so that we've got a better indicator as to uh, how we're coming in on the glide we're not using obviously we're not using any of the radio instruments so I don't have the ILS active as you can see underneath the PFD the, the ILS is just showing across here because I don't have any radios active at the moment we're just doing this visually which probably isn't the best idea thinking about it it probably isn't the best idea so I'm just going to kill the power right now slow the aircraft down and then bring the power back in very slowly as I turn towards the runway now now this is definitely feeling like the wind is buffeting me around I've got a feeling it's going to be a fairly nice crosswind landing so banking in now trying to keep that turn as coordinated as possible I can feel I can feel myself being buffeted around there you go you can see myself being buffeted around just gonna drop the power a little bit and now we're just gonna manage the power and get those puppy lights all all correct and try and keep it on the glide as best as we can now the localizer is going to be a problem or keeping up towards the center line of the runway is probably the correct way to say this it's going to be a problem because I can feel myself being pushed over quite severely to the left so we've definitely got a crosswind here so I'm having to rudder my plane right as you can see I'm not flying in a straight line at the moment and I'm having to actually bank the plane right somewhat quite severely to try and bring this in now it's it's been a very long time since I've done a crosswind landing especially a severe crosswind landing it's probably been oh, two three years since I've done one of these severe crosswind landings uh, with all realistic settings on so this is going to be a little bit rough but um let's see what I can do and the last time I think I did a severe crosswind whoa that was close that was really close and you know what I liked about that landing gear down uh, I I liked the the fact that the lightning was there and I heard the thunder rumble pretty much immediately that was very very good because that felt realistic while the other one I didn't hear it immediately it was in the distance and I heard the thunder rumble a few seconds later I like that right bring it in now so we've got some it feels like I've got wind shear here because this area is fairly calm but then I can feel, there we go, now now I can feel it buffeting right there so I'm, we might have some wind shear and it's interesting because like I said last time I flew an aircraft crosswind it was actually a 737-800 which I haven't flown in years it must be two and a half years since I've last flown one bringing in another stage of flaps we're going to see if we can bring this aircraft down we are on the glide but we're struggling to maintain that center line right now so I'm actually going to have to kick it in a lot more and it looks like we're going to land left of the runway we're going to be on the runway but it's going to be left this is bad straighten it up still getting pushed to the left still getting pushed to the left and we're down that's a pretty hard landing hard on the brakes raise the flaps to make sure we don't get any uh, lift that we don't want and try and push that nose down so I'm going to try and push that nose down there we go yoke down just trying to push that nose down and we are down 
that was a fairly rough landing but i hope you guys enjoyed that short video there will be another video very very soon in flights and world thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on flights and world leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think and do support me on patreon link to that is in the description box below your support would be massively massively appreciated also i think this thunderstorm looks pretty good and i might do another video possibly possibly in heavy snow i want to see what that feels like thank you very much for watching once again and i will see you guys in the next episode of flights in world